Hi everyone, this video is a step-by-step -step guide that shows you how to control your Domotic's home automation software with voice assistants like Google Assistant and Amazon Alexa. Therefore, Cheapridge.io will be used. This is a service that provides linking between the manufacturers of the smart speakers and your own software. There are only a few things that you need to get started. In this video, I'm using a Raspberry Pi with Domotix installed on it. And there's also an LED that acts as a light bulb and it'll be turned on and off later using Google Assistant and Alexa. However, the same steps shown here also apply for any other devices that can be controlled using Domotix. That's basically it, let's get started. The first step is to set up the LED that you've connected to your Raspberry Pi, so it can be detected and controlled by Domotix. I've quickly sketched a schematic here. Uh, in this case, I'm using GPIO4, that is just a pin of the header of the Raspberry Pi. Both an LED and a series resistor are connected to GPIO4. The other side of this circuit is connected to the ground pin. The LED will light up once you turn on GPIO number 4. When you turn GPIO 4 off, the LED will be turned off as well. When using this for real automation purposes, you might want to use a relay board in addition. The relay board is able to switch way higher loads than the Raspberry Pi itself. In fact, the Raspberry Pi can only switch a couple of milliamperes. That is barely sufficient for the LED. In order to configure the Pi, we need shell access. This could either be done using a keyboard and a screen attached to the Pi, but in my case, I'm using SSH over my network connection. I'm running that in the Windows command prompt. Just enter your details and log in. The IP address of my Pi happens to end on 164, but this is most likely different in your own network. You need to look that up in your router. We need to enable the GPI open and its driver by typing echo 4, while 4 is the GPIO number and writing that to sys class GPIO and export. Now there's a new folder that you could log up. It is in a sys class GPIO. There it is, it is called GPIO4. One of the last steps is to set the direction of the GPIO pin. A GPIO could either be an input for reading switches or sensors or alike, but we want it to be an output to control the LED. Just type echo out, out stands for output, and write it to sys class GPIO, GPIO number four, and direction. Once that is done, you can go to your Domotix page. Just go to setup and hardware. I'll add a new device here. Just give it a generic name. I'll name it Raspberry Pi GPIO, but that doesn't matter. The type is going to be, where is it? Ah, generic sysfs GPIO. Click on add. When you now go to setup and devices, you will see a new device that has been generated. Its unit is 4, that stands for GPIO number 4 that we've just configured. Now we can create the actual Domotix light using this little green button there. Give it a name, I'm gonna name it LED and click on add device. When you now switch over to the tab switches, you see the LED appearing there. Using this button we can turn on and off the LED of the Raspberry Pi. When I click it, it turns on. When I click it again, it's gonna turn off. The next step is linking together Cheapridge and Domotix. Just go to Cheapridge.io. I'll paste the link in the description. Cheapridge is basically a service that wraps around the proprietary APIs of the smart speakers and provides an open interface for third-party software like Domotix. When visiting the page, click on the register button to create a new account. You'll need to fill in both your email and a password. Afterwards, you'll receive a confirmation email containing a link to confirm your account. You need to log in afterwards. Just go to the login page. I'm gonna use one of my demo accounts here. You don't need to configure anything here since there is a plugin for Domotix that takes care of the background stuff. Only one tiny thing has to be done here. Go to hi your name, my account. 
scroll down and there is a username for the MQTT server listed. Please note that since it's required for further configuration. The Gpritch plugin for Domotix has to be installed using the Raspberry Pi's command shell again. You need to navigate into Domotix plugins directory. In my case, that is home, pi, Domotix, and plugins. But it's quite likely that it's different for you. Just paste this command there. It's going to download the plugin from GitHub. I'll paste it down below in the description. This might take a couple of seconds. Once the plugin has been downloaded, you need to restart Domotix, for example, by running a sudo service domotix restart. That's enough of the command prompt for today. We need to go back to Domotix in order to edit the LED. In order for the plugin to recognize this device, you need to update its description by typing gbridge colon, it always has to start using gbridge colon, followed by an unique name that both Google and Alexa will listen to. That could be anything you want, I'm just gonna choose ceiling light here. Click on save. In setup and settings, you have to add a new IP address to local networks. It is 127.0.0.1. This basically allows the Raspberry Pi to trust itself so the Gbridge plugin can control your Domotix setup. And of course this setting has to be applied. The connection to Gbridge can be set up in Setup and Hardware. Just create a new device here, give it a unique and generic name like, well, a Gbridge linking here. This step only has to be done once for your entire setup. The type is going to be Gbridge. There are a couple of settings that need to be done, um, but don't worry, that's quite easy. The MQTT server is always mqtt.gbridge.io on port 8883. The MQTT username is the username you've noted previously. It usually starts with gbridge dash and then your number. The MQTT password is the same as your account password. The MQTT base topic has to be updated so that your user ID matches. In my case, it's U1378. I'm gonna fill it in here. The Domotix port is the same port that you see in the address bar of your browser. Gbridge's URL is always HTTPS, followed by gbridge.couple.net. Your Gbridge username is your email address. In my case, um, it's my demo account once again. And the password is your account's password. Delete remove device has to be set to true. The bugging can be left as false, but if something doesn't work is expected and you need more information, you can set it to true. Let's click on add. The Domotix setup is now done and we can switch to our smartphones with the Google Home app on it. My Google Home app is currently in German, but that shouldn't really matter since it's quite similar in other languages. Just tap the account symbol on the bottom right. Click on add new device, add new device once again and the lower button says works with Google. A new list with smart home providers pops up. You need to search for Gbridge there. Log in into your account here. Press the link accounts button once that is done. Google will now search for any new devices. We can go to the home screen then. Scroll down and there's the new device ceiling light. The LED can now be controlled using Google Home. When I press on, the LED turns on and when I press it again, it turns off, of course. I can now say, hey Google, turn on ceiling light. Sure, turning on the ceiling light. And as you can see, it works. When you say, hey Google, turn off ceiling light. 
Ich schalte die Lampe Ceiling Light aus. It works too, even though it responds in German, but that shouldn't bother you. Exactly the same thing applies for Alexa too. I've just opened the Alexa app here. Let's go to the menu and then skills. Cheap Bridge is listed there, just like in the Google Home app, and we'll activate it. The login page here isn't as well designed and as fancy as the one of the Google Assistant. That is because the Alexa integration for Cheapridge is yet in the beta phase, but that's surely going to change within the next few weeks. More on that later. You can now just log in as you've done previously and click on link accounts. This window can be closed afterwards. Alexa asks for your permission to search for new devices. Accept that. This might take a couple of seconds. And a new device has been discovered. Just click on Setup Device, skip this step, and Ceiling Light is now ready to work with Alexa. I'm just going to show it to you real quick. Alexa, schalt the Ceiling Light ein. Okay. As you can see, it just worked. And the same thing applies for turning it off. Alexa, schalt the Ceiling Light aus. Okay. And that's it. This whole process does not only work with lights. I recommend having a look at the project page of the plugin. There are plenty of other devices that are supported too. And then there is one last thing. Cheapridge is currently running a Kickstarter campaign. We've met more than half of our goal and there are a couple of days left. The funded money will be used to ensure the proper further development of Cheapridge. There are a couple of projects running, like the improvement of the user interface and user experience, adding new device types and supporting plugin developers. However, the biggest project so far is adding support for the Alexa ecosystem, as you've seen. I'd be really grateful if you could give our Kickstarter page a look and even consider supporting Cheapridge. Thanks for watching this video, it would be really awesome if you could give it a thumbs up and even subscribe to our channel. See you next time.